God is Friday on your view. Welcome to the show. I am Obi Ajulu or Labisi Ubo, and with me are the ladies, Alhaja Nima Akashat. It's a beauty. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. What's up? What's going so on? Tomorrow is TVC's Muslim Community's Ramadan lecture. Okay. So tomorrow morning, and we have uh, Sheikh Zikrullah Shafi. I have a lineup of you know speakers, speakers at the event who will be warming us up to Ramadan. Mm. I'll be using that as content also for Iftar with me. Then there's an outing later in the evening. Okay. So please, if you are watching anywhere you are tomorrow, come to TVC and join us for a Ramadan um, event. Yeah. Also, Sunday, Saturday is Uncle Theo's birthday. Sunday is Zibri's yeah. birthday. Yes, we've heard. Okay. Wednesday is Isis's birthday. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So we want to shout out to the birthday people. Match babies. Yes. But for Zib now, you know now. Yes, special, so. special <laughs> one. Olo me. Olo me no mulale. Olo me no mulale, mulale da. Happy birthday, Zib. Yeah. I'll do the rest of the greetings. Well, you know, I know how camera, of course, of of camera. course. <laughs> <laughs> how you doing, Ramat? I'm doing very well. Juma at Mubarak to everybody. You know, we're just doing well and all. Yesterday, I had a long time at the production. You know, we produce oil and all. So I had a long time mm. oh, there okay. trying to produce the oil and all. Because one of the machine was a bit faulty, but we were able to rectify it. And I got home very late. Yeah. I'm a bit tired and all. Business oh, so much. <laughs> how, how is the combining with Azumi? At all. What we do now? Mm. I used to Just manage it. Yeah. yeah. I'm having respite this week. It's all good. How you doing, Miriam? I'm doing well. Oh, God. I just remember I owed somebody a number. Oh, wow. Uh, yes. So I have uh, a, an NC, a, a dinner that has been, that's been organized by NCF for Chief Philip Asiojo. Okay. And I've been invited. And I feel uh -huh. so special to have wow. been invited. So I'll be there. That's what I'll be doing with my Saturday, yes, basically. Exactly. And of course, um, I have a few things to do with my daughter concerning her content. Okay. So basically, cool. yeah. <laughs> Me, I think I'll be resting. I got a call this morning that my daughter is sick. And oh. in school, yeah, said so she was complaining of a headache. So they had to take her to the hospital. But she's supposed to come home today. Mm -hmm. So I'll just follow up when she gets home. I didn't plan any outing this weekend, oh. just to rest and look after the kids mm. and organize my house. Mm. <laughs> nice one. All right, that's all we can take here. Let's take a short break now. When we come back, we take the newspaper reviews. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We'll be starting the newspaper review with The Nation. Major headline, federal government, governor slowing down work on state's police. Governors give conditions on new minimum wage. Ability to pay is important. APC directs members to withdraw court cases in seven days. Ibadomont Oba Balugun as Makinde Ladoja visit family. I won't seek ticket to run for Ondo governor, says Jegede. Labor Party, NLC squabble, deepens. No backing down until killers of Army 17 are arrested, vows GOC. Bua gets tax credit contract on 60 kilometer Benin Lokoja Road. What stories do we have in the nation? Who's going? Okay, so um, on the governors um, give conditions on minimum wage. Governors listed key conditions that the National Minimum Wage Committee should consider before prepping the report on the new wage proposal. So the new wage proposal must be data-driven and must be evidence-based. And it must put into consideration the new realities of the situation in the country and put all of that in order so that we'll be able to draw out deduce laws and rules and regulations and mm -hmm. obligations that everyone should follow if they're going to take part in this exercise. Yeah. yeah. So I took a bit of that story and um, the Nigerian Labour Congress said that the new minimum wage for Nigerian workers will begin in April. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, April this year. They have the tripartite committee on the national minimum wage and they are meeting on the 27th. That's Wednesday and Thursday to submit the deliberation from the different zones. So what they did was to, you know, have like a, a public hearing and, you know, gather data from different zones and they are going to have to collate everything before they now make their final presentations and they said um they've you know said different amounts 
yeah. according to the different states and the different zones. I want to get the figures here that they are asking for. So um, the Southwest are asking for uh, 794,000 Naira as minimum wage. Uh, that's with the NLC. TUC members are saying 447,000 uh, Naira. At the North Central Zone here in Abuja, the workers are demanding 709,000 Naira as the new national minimum wage. In the South South, they are saying their own is 850,000 Naira. Uh, Northwest, they are demanding 485,000 Naira, while in the Southeast, stakeholders are demanding 540,000 Naira minimum wage. So there's this disparity on the amount yeah. and the figures that they want to collect as minimum wage. But however, like you said, the government is saying we must make sure that the states have the capacity to pay and mm. all of that. Yeah. What are I you? also have an update <coughs> on the um, um, killings of the, the, the death of the military officers that happened in Okoma. So we have the Nigerian army yesterday. They have vowed that it will, they would not rest until those who, who killed their officers and 13 men were arrested. And the mm. weapons that were stolen from the deceased were retrieved. And they said they will remain in the creeks of Okwama until you know they're able to do that. It says troops will not rest until all those involved are tracked down to account for their deeds. The troops will continue to be in the creeks until these objectives are, are achieved. Um, the uh, governor also, as well, you know, reiterating the fact that he's called traditional leaders and he's speaking to them about making sure that if they have any information mm. that, you know, they should come forward with it. And he said that, again, no innocent lives or innocent persons will be victimized except if there's um, certainty that they have been involved or in complicit, uh, are complicit in what with has incident, happened. Yeah. And, um, <coughs> you know, they are also youths, you know, they're coming together and talking to each other about this, sending their condolences also to the military. And everyone, you know, just wants this to be investigated properly and the perpetrators found and punished. Yeah. Okay, so I have the major headline in the nation. The vice president, while sitting as chair of the National Economic Council meeting yesterday, um, I don't, I don't know if he rated the governors. He just said that the governors were the ones delaying state policing. So he said... The, according to the story, himself and the president or the executive has, you know, taken the option of state policing as a solution to the insecurity, <laughs> be, um, you know, that the country is dealing with right now. And he says that, but right now before him, only 16 of all the state's governors have submitted their proposal for what they would like, the state policing or the alternatives to how their positive response to the state policing. So 20 other governors have refused to submit their own, and he has asked them that you know they have until the next next meeting which he chair, which he chairs to submit their um, reports. And also the chairman of the governors forum, the governor of Kwara State, reiterated their commitment to this uh, policing agenda, which is state policing, and he said that they believe that state policing was capable of correcting all the existing fundamental laws mm. in the insecurity framework also begging the other 20 state governors to drop their um, responses towards this. Mm. Okay, let's move on now to the punch. Major headline, 16 governors back state police submit reports to federal government. Federal government awaits 20 state reports, says NEC. Presidency source insists all governors want state police. Incorporate state police into constitutional amendments, governors tell National Assembly. NLC wants minimum wage April. Government wants against bloated demand. State owes federal government 1.7 trillion budget loans. Naira appreciates to 1,382 to a dollar. Presidency cautions speculators. Delta bloodbath. State wants monarchs against shielding suspects. Smoke out illegal miners. Federal government tells 2,000. 2,200 new mining marshals. Scores killed as bandits sacked nine Benue communities. Commuters fear gridlock as construction resumes Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Foreign trips. Federal government may save over 5 billion naira quarterly. What stories do we have in the pond? Um, our bandits have descended on about nine communities in a local government area of Benue State. They said <coughs> um, they've been killing and setting houses on fire. Wow. Um, the report says it gathered that um, the communities have also deserted, uh, have been deserted as the residents who survived the attacks um, 
you know, fled, um, fled these um, communities. Um, they said some locals have given the casualty figure as 25, but they have a lawmaker, Abu Umar, representing the area at the State Assembly. He says he's lost count of the casualties. According to him, he says 95% of the communities in the local government have become desolate following constant attacks. Mm. He says the community has been displaced. The entire upper highway come from nobody is in that community. Odubo, no one is there. Akote, Ikobi, Akata, Idiaha, Ochimeku, Adiga, nobody is in those communities. Every day there will be burning of houses. As I speak to you, three consecutive days they have been going to Akwete and burning houses after chasing them out of their ancestral homes. I mean, you know, to hear that communities are being attacked like consecutive days mm, back to back, back to back. back, to back. Wow. So, you know, you've left the communities empty. <sighs> it's serious and it's happening deep. within our country. Yeah. yeah. You just take one half more the story other before we go on a break. Okay, let me quickly take the CBN story. So, yesterday the CBN governor <laughs> was trending on X, and this is because, you know, Dollar and Naira dance that they usually dance, we're dancing better <laughs> these days. He says that uh, according to this report, the CBN has projected that the country's external reserve will increase from 34.98 billion to over 35 billion by the end of March. And the deputy governor in charge of economic policy, Mohamed Sani Abdullahi, was, making, was the one making the projections. And he said that with this FX reserve, we could finance 10 months of imports of goods only and about seven months of goods and services with that amount. He also, so this is a slight growth within the same month. Mm -hmm. So we had been on 34.98 and we're looking at getting fully to 35. So steadily, according to the report, there's been, there's been growth. So in um, the previous month, we were at 33 point um, something billion. And so we continue to grow like that. He said this, um, uh, this record will show uh, an amount of 8.46 trillion from a total external trade of 18.8 8 trillion which is continuous growth. So they kept repeating all the growth that we have had, but this just shows that the CBN is on top of this dollar issue. Yeah, it is. And with all the dollar backlog cleared fully now. Not all. Of them. Yes, almost all. Mm -hmm. almost all. Yeah, no, no, no. The airlines are complaining now. No, no, no. no. They, they came out to make a statement. Cleared, they've cleared them over and over. I thought with this announcement, the clearing The last? No, no, yes, no. So they came out. Yes, yes. they oh. said they are still owing them about 29 uh, billion, billion, yes. yes. Billion so dollars. I hope wow. that's but that's that's like a drop from yes. the initial the amount. Initial, yes, uh, yes, initial. Yeah. Yeah. We are getting there. Yeah, we are so getting there steady. gradually. When, when they finish really sweeping is. that out of the way, mm. do not have that. I hope that our quest for yeah. you know sourcing dollar for some things that we consider personal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Arguing also, for the CBN, they said they had cleared all the valid. Valid ones. Yeah. Valid ones. So these ones that they are complaining that they still owe them 29. Some, more, some are maybe, more valid. Uh, than uh, than maybe others. they have some, some issues. Some valid data. Right, let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's take a short break now. When we come back, the newspaper reviews continue. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we're still reviewing the punch. I have a quick story here. The federal government, through the Ministry of Solid Development Minerals, has secured the services of 2,220 security personnel under a new security architecture with the mandate to smoke out illegal miners and all those who flout the nation's mining laws. It charged the operatives uh, to also handle the theft and all nefarious activities around the nation's mineral resources to enable the nation reap benefits, maximum benefits, uh, uh, from his God-given resources. Uh, the Minister of uh, Solid Mineral Development, Dele Alake, was the one who gave this charge when he received the specially trained officers drafted from the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, codenamed Mining Marshal Corps, at the mining uh, headquarters, ministry's headquarters on Thursday in Abuja. That was yesterday. And he said this development came two months after the president had established an inter- um, 
ministerial committee led by Solid Minerals Minister to deliberate on modalities in achieving the mandate of producing a blueprint for securing the country's natural resources, including solid minerals, forests, and marine economy. You know that we've had in different states where um, illegal people are mining our resources without the proper licensing. People are stealing these resources. And so they've charged these 2,200 officials that their duty is to fish those people out and stem this and um, i think it's a good one we hope that they are successful in this so which other stories okay, so do we on have? foreign trips the <laughs> president bola tinubu has raised concerns about the rise co rising cost of international travel borne by director permanent secretaries workers of the federal civil service the federal government may save an estimated amount of five billion every quarter from the new policy banning officials of ministries, departments, and agencies from embanking on public funded foreign trips for three months. According to the, the data was collated from the breakdown of funds earmarked for international travels in the 2024 budget, budget MDA. So um, concerning the current economic situation, that's what the president is putting into consideration, mm -hmm. and that's why he wants the ban on... It's also a follow-up on our topic on the madam that carry all this training. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. To go and embarrass the president and they stand on, you know, this. Exactly. Yeah, but he, she's been doing it now. It's not, a, <laughs> it's not her first time, and it's not new. Let's move on now to the Daily Sun. Major headline governors insist on state's place seek alteration of constitution to accommodate security arrangements. Northern Senators Forum demands resolute action to tackle kidnappings. Kano's continued detention in bad faith. Family. 29 billion fraud, EFCC rearranged in Yako, Son, and two others. Okwama killings. Oborevori cautions traditional rulers against shielding suspects. Abbasanjo Uzodima and Nor Sultan and others expected as item people honor, as item people, honor Bishop Onoha at 60. Lassa fever, NCDC registers 20 deaths in 16 states. INEC deadlines, eight political parties risk non-fielding of candidates in Edo. Again, headsmen kill over 15 in Benue, injure others who are helpless, local government chairman cries out. Nigeria, U.S. others unveil food security strategic com country plan. Terrorists abduct driver, 18 passengers in Katsina highway attack. 20 million Nigerians in diaspora remit $24 billion yearly. The son, what stories? Okay, so Yako's case is one of interest. Um, you know, the governor, former governor Yako of, uh, what was the state again? Uh, Kaduna. Kaduna. Adamawa, sorry. Um, former governor of Adamawa State, Muritala Yako and his sons. Okay. You know, um, where we are in for the alleged 29 billion fraud that they had done when he was governor. Mm -hmm. And this time around, they were in for a 37 count of money laundry allegedly perpetrated under him as governor and as well as the companies that he supposedly laundered these funds through. Blue Upper Limited, Sebor Farms and Extensions Limited, Pagoda Fortunes Limited, Toa Assets Management Limited and Cross Energy Limited. But the point of interest for me is that this matter has come before two ju um, judges. Mm -hmm. uh, my Lord Justice Evo Chuku was the first to handle it. And before him, according to the, um, the, his defense team, they had called eight witnesses and he died. Oh, wow. And so the matter was then transferred to Justice mm -hmm. O'Connor Bank, who before him, 21 witnesses had been called and the case was, case was closed. Mm -hmm. But then the defendants now went and appealed. And then, you know, after appeal, the matter was dismissed and then returned to the federal high court. And federal court is saying they will start afresh, de novo, all over again. Mm -hmm. So I have this experience presently in Ogun State where I filed a matter where I spent the entire two years. And my client thinks, ah, Nima, you're not doing enough. You're not, we, in fact, we were at the close uh, written address. We were sure that, you know, we're, it was it looking gets, positive yeah, for us. Justice. And then the judge, judge um, retired. Hey. So we're before another judge now, starting afresh, oh. all the new evidences. In fact, the judge is interested because the matter came up last week, this week and the judge was like, okay, this evidence people are bringing will have to be taken afresh. So please, he hold on. Is new... this how it's done in Yobodo Ibo, where if a judge it's retires... It's done like that because for, for the principle of fair hearing, you have to try a matter 
all over. From because as a judge, I'm sitting, I've not heard before. I cannot rely on what another judge had written. Okay. It means I've not given fair hearing to the parties. Oh, wow. So the judge will have to hear it. But we are saying, let's bring in technology. Mm. Let's bring in new things. Because starting to afresh record. comes at a cost yeah. for mm. the parties as well as the litigants. Mm -hmm. As well as uh, time asking, for the lawyers. If that's how they do it. I they, think there are sure. modern ways to do it. But now, yeah. EFCC now are freshly, after starting we are all done, over. starting all over again, putting all yeah. parties through distress. Any other stories in the sun? Yes, uh, I have um, the African Descenders in Diaspora Union, AFRIDU. So they are a platform created to foster unity, solidarity, and empowerment among <laughs> African descendants in diaspora. And they had uh, paid a courtesy visit. Um, to the Minister of Housing and Urban Development, architect Ahmed Musa Enkiwa. And, um, you know, at, at that meeting, he, the federal, he disclosed, or the federal government disclosed, that over 20 million Nigerians in diaspora remit over $24 billion per annum. Mm. And, of course, you know, that's such a massive amount, which Just... was said as well, and that this amount is crucial to impacting the development in all sectors of the nation's economy. But in this particular meeting, they were talking about participation in the housing market. And um, so he was talking about different programs, you know, that um, the federal government was collaborating with Nigerians in diaspora. So he mentioned that um, they're collaborating with NEEDCOM and two federal housing agencies that are under the supervision of the ministry, uh, includes the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria and the Federal Housing Authority, he also talked about the diaspora mortgage loan, mm. which um, it's a loan that um, allows for, you know, um, those in diaspora to access up to 50 million naira to own their homes in Nigeria. He explained that the participants could access the loan via the National Housing Fund um, loan, the rent to own or the individual construction loan window. And the terms are, you know, at best market rates include um, and also payback period of up to 10 years. He talks about the Federal Mortgage Bank as part of the initiative. So it's just, you know, <coughs> what Nigeria is doing to leverage on mm. what we get from the diaspora and also allow for them to come and invest, you know, in the housing um, sector in Nigeria. Yeah. So we're moving. So you have another story? story? Yes, the next story is terrorists abduct passengers from Kersena State. I'm really very down with this because I'm from Kersena State. It actually happened around my local government. Wow. Yeah, so um, this thing is becoming very common in the north. Mm -hmm. And all these terrorists, is either terrorists, bandits, kidnapping and all. Please, mm -hmm. I want to plead our governors, everybody, please let's come together mm -hmm. and try and see what we can do to stop Some this of them are the governors that have not submitted. We can't even travel, things. we can't travel comfortably, you know, with our mm -hmm. minds at rest between from one place to another. Suspected terrorists have reportedly abducted the driver and all the passengers in an 18-seater commercial bus belonging to the Kasna State, who pleaded anonymity said the incident occurred yesterday, 12.30, involving a bus traveling from Huntua to in the southern part of the state. This thing happened at, um, on Maraban Gankara Highway, Gankara local government, and all. And they, that they matched the um, passengers through the forest, into the mm. forest, and... That's has, so that's has been their modus operandi, yeah. It's just, just a painful one. All right, the last um, paper today, I don't know if we can take it. Um, the Nigerian Tribune, S soldiers to remain in the creeks until Delta governor cautions traditional rulers against shielding suspects. No respite for poultry farmers as product scarcity rising cost persists. Nasima kicks over CBN's lift of FX access, access for importation of milk and dairy products, says new policy would discourage local production. Erufai's visits to SDP stares debate as ex-governor host NSA. Federal government unveils mines, Marshall, to secure mining sites. We've taken that. Let court decide who is a terrorist sponsor, Gumi. Meta to introduce monetization features for Nigerian creators on Instagram in June. Amateko Falls robbery attempt in Ondo arrest one. 20 states failed to submit report on state police that C states FCT owe 1.7 trillion in budget support. 1 billion liters of petrol smuggled out to benefit those not paying tax, according to the federal government. Any quick story mm -hmm. taken? I have in? one in the Vanguard, very short story. Okay. okay. Uh, um, Australia announces <laughs> soft <laughs> visa rules for Nigerian students. Yeah, right. And so I, I left Tribune because I don't want to get there. Okay. So Australia okay. now begin the sea finish that we're enjoying in the UK right now. Day two, 
are saying that they have to, you know, put into <coughs> a visa scheme for international Not students from Nigeria and other countries. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, according to the Home Affairs Minister, he said these rules, these new rules, will allow government to suspend universities from recruiting foreign students if they break those rules. Mm -hmm. He says one of them is to increase the English language requirement for students and graduates visas to be to which would likely aggravate an already tight rental market and reduce the drive to come to do um, migrate to their country. And it says that um, they have genuine student tests that will also crack down on international students working to relocate to Australia for work, while the imposition of no further stay condition will be used for more visitor visa visas. I swear, as far my self dignity is not, it's not, <laughs> it's not, it's not <laughs> uh, uh, Let's not bother with these people. On this place, let's make yeah, it work. Let's make yeah, let's make it work. All right, that's all we can take on the newspaper review. When we come back, we'll move on to our hot topics. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So yesterday we talked about a woman that lamented about the strong offensive order of her husband's breath. She went further by stating that they've only kissed thrice in seven years. During the course of the show, we got a call from a man that was currently going through a divorce process due to a similar occurrence. And um, we're going to also play some videos, you know, showing and um, talking about compromise in marriage. Now, the question is, um, how do we compromise in marriage? To what extent is the compromise needed? How do we know when this compromise is becoming one too many and is chipping off your self-worth and who you're supposed to be in that marriage. Is there a band to how long one can compromise in marriage to make marriage work? And you can join the conversation and call us on 0810-764-1679 or 0902-416-3440. Or you can tweet to us at TVC Connect using the hashtag YourViewTVC and also follow us on Instagram at the ladies of your view. So this compromise everybody talks about. Marriage, you must compromise, you must collect the basketballs, you must find a way to make it work. How, um, how, how do we know when this starts and when this should stop, right? But before I come to the ladies, let's take a video. Let's listen to this video. They say we marriages should be honest though. <laughs> We should not act like it's all glossy. It's all glossy. <laughs> we should be yeah. honest, okay? So what do we say about this issue of commitment? You mentioned that word and compromise. Alaja, I okay, Personally, Rama, you I think that if in marriage we have to compromise because nobody comes full with a complete package. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't come in a complete package. So if you have, maybe you have an issue with your spouse or you have something that you don't like about your spouse, I think we should sit down, discuss, talk about it, and see how we can resolve it, and see how the way forward. There are some things you can't change, and those things you can't change, just accept it. Accept them, find a way of just accepting it so that there will be peace, you will have your own peace, and the, your spouse too can have his own peace as well. So compromising here is just overlooking some things. You have to try and overlook some things that you can't change. You can't change those things. And once you can't change those things, we just have to accept it. Hmm. So what if those things are your deal breakers, right? And those things are things you can't even live with. Let's take, for instance, you have a very sensitive news back to this topic we mm -hmm. took yesterday. Okay. And you find out that this, your spouse, has bad mouth odor. Very bad. You have not kissed in a very long time. And you have tried to tell him, you've talked to him about it. You know, you've tried to buy mouthwash, you know, change your toothpaste, change his brushes and all of that. And it's other, so this one is giving you the, the feel of this is who I am. Take me, accept me like this or not. 
There's nothing I can do about this. He's not even putting in the effort to also compromise for you by brushing regularly. And you have not kissed in a long time. So I'm asking the extent of the compromise. Because when we have like a blanket compromise, it seems that whatever marriage gives to you, stay there. And that's where our parents came from, where they say, once you're married, though, don't come back home. There's no room for you in our house. Whatever you see there, you accept it. So at what, where, where do you draw the line between compromise and living in... I don't want to use the word endurance again. I've overused it on this table. <laughs> and living in a way that is not even pleasing to your mental health. Mm. Mm. That is because a very difficult, difficult one, though. I go, it's a give, difficult give, one. It is, right? It's a difficult one. And because of your mental health, you have to if find the, the if, the, if the spouse is adamant, that's a different case entirely. Mm -hmm. But if the guy is accepting the fact that, oh, okay, I smells are not, okay, let's look for Working ways. Working towards it. Let's look for ways of making it better and all of that. If it means that, okay, before we kiss, you use that spray, pa, 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 and then we kiss and all. If kiss is really... The issue. The issue, exactly. But important. there are other ways. There are other ways you we can... You can walk around it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nima. This one, mm, 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 this morning, Nima. Nima <laughs> I'm agreeing. Okay, <laughs> okay so there are, okay, there are levels to compromises. Mm -hmm. You know, just as Rama said now, if the person is willing, is, you see he's, he's trying. You know, some people are born. You know, when we took body odor, I talked about how someone had um, ainea or a twisted um, mm. intestine, uh, intestine yeah. as a baby and we didn't know. Mm. And so she suffered body odor all her life till... Mm. She fainted at work at 21. Mm -hmm. And then they had to do a scan and saw that she, you know, they did a quick surgery to unlock it. And that just disappeared. So there are certain internal things that happen. So the person is a sweet, nice, kind-hearted person. Mm -hmm. You like to be with them. And you see the effort they put into struggling to deal with something. You, that's, that's a worthy compromise you make. But you see that one, you say, you can't tell me nothing. You have to put up with my smelly body, smelly mm -hmm. this, all of that. So you, that's one. Well, you've married somebody, for instance, who, when they're unconscious, they do things. Mm. So, for instance, somebody that snores when they're sleeping. It's not like they deliberately sleep to snore. <laughs> exactly. So, you now say, no, you're snoring, the volume is too loud, the volume is too low, I can't take. You know, you might just be losing someone great. Perfect. But there are certain compromises that are beyond you. You know, and the video we watched, she was not talking about those kind of compromises of body odor, mouth odor. Some compromises that are major. Mm. You know, she having to give up some time of her life for the family to grow, yeah. he having to, you know, for him to get to where he's going, somebody has to, you know, and then they're mar in marriage and they're not talking for a while. I mean, that kind of reality where in a period of time, we might just not see each, each other. other. Mm. So we come home, we spend the night every day each with each other, but the they, what, how many, what, what's the worth of the hours we spend together? Mm. So he comes in, he sleeps, I come in, I sleep. Mm. You know, I, I come in much earlier to be with my kids. I sleep off with my kids. And my husband comes and I think, oh, let me not wake her. And, then, is that, and that's yeah, married. Sometimes you know? it's like that. You know, so sometimes it's like that. Mm -hmm. That's not enough time to say. You know, some people just go, we don't see each other. I cannot, no. I leave it. And that serious um, things like that is from people's lives. I am okay with it. I'm okay jumping to the office sometimes to see my husband, even though we, could, we live in the same house, mm -hmm. because I know we didn't see. Yeah. So when is your lunch time? I'll be around your time. office. Yeah. Take your lunch time out and let's talk, you know? Or let's, you know, see each other. Some people, those are their reality. Some people cannot even get it because they are across states, they are across countries, and, you know, they still make their marriages work. <clears throat> Such compromises are huge. Those are the kind of serious things we're talking about. But a person not working at a defect, in marriage is serious. It's like yeah. you're not having kids and thinking, so you too, you live your life not having kids. Mm. If you truly love someone, you want them to have a whole life. You know, you do what you do to make sure that they are living well, they're living whole. <coughs> you don't give them half and half and make them destroyed. Mm. You know, that's, that's the kind of compromise we're talking about here. So having a body odor, those are things that are serious for some people. But if the person is not working at it, that's when there's a problem. But yes. the person is working hard at it, mm -hmm. you know, I do this for my kids. I talked about it, soaking the clove water and getting everybody to do a mouthwash. I do the coconut oil mouthwash. I saw the topic yesterday and I'm mm. thinking... There are so many remedies Okay, let's get Mouthwashes some. that, you know, you can help with. Let, let's hear Mira. So the person is not willing. Okay, so first of all, I would like to... You know, I wanted to understand compromise because mm. I have always understood it to be 
something like a mutual agreement between two people. Okay. So I don't understand it as, so I won't call it a compromise if one person is unwilling to come to the table. Mm -hmm. So it has to be that two people are. So that is why, that's why it's called a compromise. That's how I understand it. And so it means that both of us are giving up something. You know, both of us have recognized that there's something where we're, we're taking less than something. Mm -hmm. Both of us have agreed to do that. So we're now talking with someone who is involved, someone who <coughs> is interested in reaching a compromise. Mm. So it's different from the person that is adamant and saying, I don't want, that's this not, is that, me. Uh -huh, that's not compromise, at least that's how I understand it. So having said that, now that we understand that, you know, both of us have to come to this agreement, it's just a part of life. Compromises happen with every kind yeah, of relationship. You. Mm -hmm. you know, when you said, okay, I was saying, how Sabah and the Etiko Goma, oh, you know, we're exactly. not completely 10. Yeah. That's what mm -hmm. it means, literally. You know, we all come with our faults, we all come with our weaknesses. Yeah. And, um, you know, with many relationships, really what even attracts us to each other is that you sort of complement my weaknesses and my strengths. Exactly. Where I'm weak, you're strong. strong. Where you're um, weak, I'm strong, you know? Exactly. So, we, we, you know, a good relationship is that we recognize these things and then we work on it. Now, um, concerning hygiene issue or health issue, because yesterday it was also differentiated, especially in this particular oral thing we were talking about. Mm -hmm. If it's a health issue and someone has put in the work, how much are you willing to compromise? You know, mm -hmm. I like what you said, Rama, where you said, the kissing thing, is it that important? Because for some people, they are willing to compromise yes, on kissing. Because I there also, are the good mm, parts of, the exactly. of this person. So there's some people, and, and then in doing that, what it will mean <coughs> is that around the time that we're supposed to be intimate, there are things that we can do to oh, make boy. it easier. Exactly. Or there are some things we will not even do at all mm -hmm. because this does not work. Or I make sure, you know, I pack your bags with all sorts of mints and all sorts of things, mm -hmm. you know, to help during that time. That's if you're willing to take, make that compromise. And I feel that many people actually will be willing to compromise on some of these things because he's such a great guy. He's mm. such a good father. Mm. He's such a provider. He's my support. Then would um, body order or mouth order that he's working on, would that be enough for me to put things aside? Truly, um, in this day and age, I find that we have... You know, in conversations sometimes about self-love and things like that, sometimes I think we take it a bit too far, mm -hmm. you know, that we misconstrue it to the point where we're unwilling to compromise at all, mm. you know. So we need to find the balance between I love myself, <coughs> my mental health, and this is something we can go through, we can work out because both of us, you know, have our weaknesses. Yeah. So it's the I'm balance sorry. between that self-care yeah. and... Compromise. Rama, let's take a short break. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're willing to jump in. When we come back, we continue this conversation. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us still on the issue of compromising in marriage. Um, I want to believe that what we have described here now is a healthy marriage, yes. mm. right? Where the two partners involved are supposed to be rational and reasonable. And because they love their partner, you're able to, okay, let me, let me do this for you. Let me step down so that we can do this for the family. You are thinking of the greater goal. You are thinking of um, the fact that you want to spend the rest of your life with this person. So in that sort of relationship, it's easier to compromise. I had to compromise a lot in my relationship. Mm -hmm. I used to eat onions, sliced, very large, you know. When you cook for my father and he doesn't see the chunky onions, he will not enjoy the food. As, it was as bad as when I'm frying plantains or yam or whatever it is I fry. Mm -hmm. I slice onions and put in the oil, the aroma alone, before I even start frying. It was something I grew up with. But then I met a man who doesn't like to see onion in the food. He will not, in fact, when we go out, when we were dating, when we go out, I'll be picking okay. out onion for him outside. 
So when I started cooking, I had to make sure that I blend all my onions. I use a lot of onion, but I blend it. You don't see it in the food. Yeah. Now, when I see big onions in the food, I'm not even able to eat it again because I've done this for 20 something years of my life. It's, you know, like this is like a healthy compromise. Yeah. There are other things that I'm a very scattered person, for instance. Once I go and look for one item in the wardrobe, everything comes down and I will not arrange it. Scatter, scatter, you know, he had to compromise on that. I love you enough, it do doesn't matter. I will call somebody or he helps me to tidy and arrange it. These are some compromises. Sometimes I want to See take a trip, hold on. No. I want to take a trip, maybe I have like a coaching course or something and then he's asking her, you know, I have a meeting, you know, who's going to look after the kids? I step down. You know, so I can look after the kids. So he travels, right? It's compromise because I am involved with this person. Yeah. I see a future with this person. But if I was in a toxic relationship, how do you think I would have the heart to compromise in these sort of things? So let's also put ourselves in the shoes of people who are in bitter relationships where you don't even have a voice. Would you also advise such people to compromise to the detriment of their health or their mental health mm -hmm. or their life? So, so they may not compromise, but they, they, would learn, they would have to be patient. You have to be patient, exactly. Because some of these things are phases. We all have, must have experienced one thing or the other. So you must either have experienced a time in your marriage where there was you know, no communication properly, you know, and you wanted A, or God wanted B, both of you might not talk to each other, you know, or you have a relative Let me who doesn't you like you. So that I can Who's get close? everything you're saying. Okay. The call has been on hold for a while. We have Ugochuku. Good morning, Ugochuku. Hello? I don't think he's there. You might have okay, so you might have, you might have even a relative who doesn't like your face part time, mm. and the person is too important to the other spouse, you know, for that, that to affect your marriage. You know, you see some people who can just say to their fathers or their mothers, oh, "No, no, no! If you don't love my wife, I'm going to work." You can see some who say, "If you don't love my husband, don't, then it's you I would leave." But some you will have them torn to have that relative not be in their lives. And as a woman or a man, you have to be patient. Yeah. to see that resolve itself yeah. rather than, you know, just walk out. Because, okay, he loves Ramat, for instance, but his, Miriam is his elder sister he also respects and loves. And maybe their parents are no longer to, uh, yeah. alive, mm -hmm. but she, this is his only sibling. And you're married to him already. And both of you, you will now say, no, you, take, you can't say a person like that. You have to wear it out, wait, wait it out. You know, something might happen and Miriam becomes the best friend to her and both of you have it all. And you know, so some people will just be like, no, I can't stay or I can't deal with. Mm -hmm. In life, you must have some things, you have to be patient with them. What I would not advise is when it is life threatening. Mm. Yeah. You know, this thing we call mental health, mental health, mental health. We forget that a stronger part of mental health is also resilience, that you can fight things through. You come out of those kind of trials and you're tougher. You're stronger, you're greater, you go into life and you just, you know, continue to break yeah. and win things. Actually, so marriage, I've been told, actually I've been told to that we have up. to go on a short mm -hmm. commercial okay. break. Okay. There's something coming up. All right, we'll be right back. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. This is to inform our audience that we are breaking away from our regular programming to go live to Marina, Lagos, for the announcement of 1,200 African entrepreneurs across 54 African countries by the Tony Ilumelu Foundation. Our regular programs continue on our UK channels on Sky 534, while our viewers in Nigeria can continue watching Your View and other regular programs on our YouTube channel at the TVC News. Nigeria. Now back to our topic, but we have a caller, Swat from Abuja. Good morning, Swat. Good morning. Are you there? Hello. Yes, I'm here. Good morning. Can you hear me? Swat from Kaduna, are you there? Yes, I am here. Okay. Good You're live. All right. Um, wonderful job, ladies and gentlemen. We can barely hear you. Volume, please. Okay. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. The line is in clear. Wanted to contribute to what you guys are saying. I see the topic that I think is very important. Okay. Now, we have to talk about this thing. 
Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that anyone who's not willing to compromise is not ready to get married. Because the truth is, like, you know, one of the presenters was saying that people with different stress need that we come together and complement each other. You get? So I think it's really very important. But one thing people need to learn to understand is the period of courtship is a very important you know, period for people before they get married. That's where you get to uh, absorb things that you think you can take. And also, so, you know, choose your path with what to Choose the one that you know you can carry and just ensure that if the red flags are too much for you to be able to go into a marriage that you know that um, yeah. you can get within all because you are desperate to get married. So that's why you have the period of patience so that you're able to choose the one that you know that you might not be comfortable with it, but it's something that you can then you can overlook it, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. And there are times, of course, that... We're well, struggling to really but, hear you. I'm struggling to hear you. I'm sure the viewers heard. Yeah. yeah. I know she said something about the courtship is really important. Yeah. Mm. So you know some important. of these things and avoid the one that won't work for you. Ramat, yeah. are you ready? Okay, to so uh, all, all I want to say is in marriage, you have to give up some of your likes. You have to give up some of the things that you really like for the marriage to actually work. I'm sorry for the lady that is going through that the stuff of her spouse having a smelly mouth or something. Yeah, there are ways that you can, you have to accept it, one. Is that you accept it or number <coughs> two, you try as much as possible. Maybe when you are, like I said, if you're about to kiss or you want to do something, if it's that important to you, if it's that important to you, you can use, there are so many herbal remedies, you know, and all that you can use before you can kiss and all. Okay. So if that's really a problem, I'm just going to say you just have to yeah. kind of like accept it and... Okay. Take it as wow. one of those things. Yeah, so also I wanted, you know, you are, can I? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, sure. you know, you were saying something about um, compromise in a healthy relationship and being in a toxic relationship. So uh, compromising is not always easy. Mm. And you can be, you can gradually compromise in a healthy relationship. True. You know, I'm compromising, <laughs> but you can see on my face that I don't I like compromising, it. you know. Mm. So it's not that. Oh, healthy relationships have very easy compromises. I'm trying to say that, you know, everybody deals with it somehow. And many times when we talk about these things that we deal with in marriage, people always say, did you not court? Did you not whatever? But for many of us who are married, we understand that, yes, in the court, it, it gives you a glimpse of the sort of person that person is, you know, is a kind person, is a firm person, is a hardworking person, that sort of thing. Mm. But what marriage does is that it puts you different tests Time per time, you Every know, day. something comes up, different factors come up, and then it tests <clears throat> your character. So in that, so it's not that you did not notice some things, it's that there's always a new situation, uh, always a new combination of factors that now tests your character. So, um, and then you find yourself having to compromise on some things. You have, let's say you're dating a very nice person. Everything you want, he always does. He listens to you. Mm -hmm. You get married, and then things are maybe getting tough. And he says, you know what? I put my foot down. You're not doing this particular business. I have done this and done this because of the economy, because mm -hmm. of something. Mm -hmm. And in your mind, you're like, this man is just a wicked person. Mm. But he's not. His kindness looks like wickedness at this point because he's looking he at the adjust. bigger picture and yeah. we're adjusting. So sometimes, it's, you know, I just want us to understand that it's not that people did not court or did not pay attention. But the reality of life is that sometimes things happen out of the blue and we have to adjust. You have married a man who is so good to you and everything, and then you find that um, he's in a relationship with someone at work. But some people are like, that's my deal breaker, I can't handle it. But we've spoken to women who have sat through it and you know, they'll tell us many years after of how they compromise and mm. stay through it. I'm not giving anybody any and advice here. Yes, I'm just <laughs> saying that like, some things that you would not yeah. You cannot stand. Some mm -hmm. people have been able to compromise Besides, and come out mm -hmm. on the better side yeah. because of that. Mm -hmm. So we have a caller, Sylvester from Ikoyi. Good morning, Sylvester. Oh, 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 sorry, we lost that. You know, this thing you just said now uh, reminded me of something I heard a um, long time ago where they said, when you're courting and you're dating, you put 
you show your representative, not necessarily your real self. You don't even know. You, don't you, you, your you, best you put forward. your best foot forward. Exactly. So the person who is going to hang out to get to know this person is well dressed, you've brushed your teeth, Everything you've combed your hair, really you know, you're looking good, you, you picked out the shoe. In fact, your siblings will help you pick out the shoe. You're going on a date, you pick out dresses, mm -hmm. you know, you look good. Now, when situations happen around, you try to manage your um, anger yeah. and all of that. You don't really show your true self till you get into the home. They say no matter how long you date, there are some things that the person will still find out when you're married. Because when you're married, they say two of them are naked and not ashamed. Your nakedness is open yeah. to the other person. You are no longer hiding to poo in the toilet. You know, the person can walk in while you are doing that. The person can it walk in while you are... Everything. As in, it reveals everything, yeah. And then the pressures of day-to-day -day life exactly. now for that reveals mm -hmm. your true character yeah. and how you are able to handle different situations. So, I don't think... People are just plain stubborn. So, when I was talking about hard compromises, I just thought of two instances in my marriage. You know, I, I used to say that I've always been the one naming and choosing my kids' school, mm. directing the way their life yes. was going on. So God said, yeah, God I, want to do, I want to be their daddy again. Wow. And I decided <laughs> that he was choosing school. Mm -hmm. That was a compromise that is still breaking my heart every day. See my daughter and how she's trying to cope outside home. For someone, I was like that. I had a sheltered upbringing. My parents will love you till you don't want to even leave them. Mm. You know, so I wanted to love my kids like that. I, don't, I did not plan in my life. And my child will wake up a day and not be able to say, Mommy, I didn't do. <laughs> but my daughter is having to cope with that. Every time she calls to adjust, sometimes I, almost, I, I will drop my phone, I will cry anyway, I will continue because the bigger goal is that she, he wants her to be very independent. Yeah. And, and you know, so I had to compromise that. Yeah. But the compromise I cannot understand, calling him out tomorrow, is, Sunday is his birthday, is why don't you want to close your wardrobe door? I'm oh. always kicking that door every day. <laughs> and be like, because you have to kick it. Yes. You know, and it's a compromise. I'm living with every time we go, oh God, close the door. I think my own is my husband jogs the whole of the world and then walks all the way to the bedroom with his with shoes. With his shoes, oh my ow, God. Ow, ow, that thing. No. <laughs> One day I was so upset. I was like, God, put your shoes outside. Don't come. He says, Madam, there are so many things that you do. I don't complain. I don't, I don't complain. complain. <laughs> when I sat there, I thought, I was like, yes, there are so many. So if this is the only one that you better just accept, I was like, it's true. So yeah. when I see it, I just pick it and clean the area yeah, and put yeah, it yeah, outside. It Until tomorrow, he still does it. Mm. For, I'm yeah, telling yeah, you, this yeah, morning, the doors are always like this. I'm like, mm -hmm. don't do this thing like this. It's so hard. <laughs> and he has the perfect door. So my own door is faulty. And I have to take effort to close it because I can't leave it open. And then your own that is just good. Just keep, just do Who's them. They'll close themselves. Mm. We'll still widen them like this every day, 15 years. 15 <laughs> years, not, not a day that has failed. Not a day, yes. There are no. some, some things that you have been doing too for 15 for years. years. That no, if I ask, is that, that can only be now. cooking. He will, he will tell okay, us. so he he will tell we used to have this back and forth about me, addic my addiction to chewing gums. Okay. And this Ramadan, I've been deliberate that mm. I'm going to give it up this year. And wow. I did not announce, so I'm yeah. forced to talk about it. I did not announce. So even now I'm not fasting, I'm on my period. I've not bought a gun. She told us I've announced it, so I'm on my period, <laughs> so I'm drinking. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you don't get, no get shame. God, you know, so I have decided that I'm never going back to chewing gums. Gum. But my husband hasn't noticed. Ah, He's still leaving the door open. So we, we had a fight about... You know, he, maybe he has noticed, gone. but he has not just said anything so to you yet. Let me pause you, Diva, please. Let's take this call. Who am I from Festac? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Okay, my question is this. I like the topic of the same. How do you compromise? Married to a man that I like, value, and I don't get value. And there's no value. How do you do about it? How do you do what? Please I come again. Listen, Emma. No, we didn't get that. Could you repeat? I said, married to a man that I love, value, and I don't want value. Oh! <laughs> oh wow. So how do you cope with it? Does it chew it raw or you have to put it in its food? I have to put it in the stew when I'm cooking. But garlic is nice for stew. Well, garlic Find is a way healthy. to love it now. It's, it's healthy. healthy for you. I'm telling you, it's healthy. I swallow mine. Yeah, but the smell is really very I'm used to the smell. Can be 
that above the, sometimes. compared to the health benefits mm, of it. Yeah. Garlic does a lot of things. And might have a genetic thing with the side that, you know, they've always used garlic for. You just need to learn. That's part of loving mm, someone. And compromise. Need to learn to love. So my husband cannot stand garlic. Mm. For me, I cannot live garlic. Mm. So we are still living. So, so uh, whatever is valid, let's not just yes. push her. No, I'm not pushing it aside. We're, just we're, saying, we're also trying to appeal. I hear you, it's valid. <laughs> I mean, it's valid, valid. And, um, but it's something you can compromise. Yeah. Exactly. You can. So, and I'm sure you have been doing it. Because she's it, but... the one in charge. Mm. So my late father's friend, the one that we had this burial on Friday last week, doesn't eat any kind of seasoning. No salt, no maggi, no anything. No seasoning. Mm -hmm. I remember traveling to Ife for my first holiday. And they gave me food. If you see the way the stew was red, mm, you the meat was sweet meat. I just dug in. And the first one went, mm -hmm. <laughs> It was bland. And they're like, oh, you have me. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I so I noticed sex. the wife was really laughing, <laughs> as if she was really rolling over. Mm -hmm. So she gets that effect from every visitor that, that comes in. Oh. So she was just looking at me. And the night she now called me to the kitchen. She said, oh, there's a way we go about it. She now showed me the stash own. somewhere there. But you dare not give daddy any of these things. Mm. So we all stayed there and learnt it. So she had a stash somewhere. There's a way we now, when you're doing it, you put a small aside. If you cannot get to put your small, because you know some of these things, you can't put them after the food is fully mm -hmm. done. You just give up. Hmm. So when I ate it for the three days, you are just, you know, I just you know, I'm just realizing I, that I've compromised on something that I have forgotten that compromise. Yeah, yeah. So it became a part See, of you. See, onions and pepper. No matter what I cook, I will add that on top. I love it. But... Wow. Um, my husband can he can't, can't he it. can't um what he it? can't stand it Raw. like no he can't even stand pepper you know mm, it affects yes, him yes. okay so I'm just realizing that in my house we don't really cook with pepper as much yeah. it's been happening I, yes. I did, I didn't it now becomes your new normal ah, I used to, um, to use it. my best food used to be beans ah, in fact the first meal I ever gave to this or girl was beans. He ate it too. We're dating. <laughs> he did not complain. He ate the beans. So in my head, okay, we're good with yeah. the beans. As we enter marriage, auntie, I don't like beans. Oh. Eh? From where? Oh. Then when I stopped, I reduced and re right now we struggle to even make beans. Then I also gave birth to a boy who doesn't he doesn't want to see beans. Mm -hmm. And when I want to insist that you must eat these beans, come, you must eat this. The father will say, Leave him. I don't eat. Mm -hmm. Don't force him. Give him something else. Give him another option. Mm -hmm. Only for me to realize that we no longer cook beans in our yes. house. Yeah. Just like my husband. You know? My husband does not ha. like draw. Now nah, what? Doesn't like draw soup. Anything that draws, he does mm -hmm. not like it. Okay. Wow. So automatically in my home now we don't eat draw soup. And... Because he determines that means like because he doesn't eat raw, so mm. my house we can't after eat, a while you won't we bother. We just stop. We just be doing our vegetable soup so you, and a goosey soup like and all. About mm. so, 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 so let's let's let's. But this one, some people will be listening to us and say, hey, "This so one's like easier." Yeah. Yeah. But for this but, lady, no, for no, this no, lady that talked about garlic, I'm going somewhere. Let's hear one Okay, go ahead. For this lady that talked about garlic, as I said, just put a little in the food. Or don't put at all, but one thing with garlic is that once you don't put it, you the person will know. Yeah. Uh -huh. So your husband will know, but just put a little in it mm. so that it won't be so much, so that you'll be able to. Uh -huh. Yes, I was going to say that, you know, we're talking about these things and we're laughing. And somebody might say, and hey, these are easy things. But the truth <laughs> is, it's really about how you, you handle, how it. You handle it. Yes. I've when seen I some people you. go really crazy over <laughs> things I've thought. This just it's not that it's not that deep. Mm -hmm. Why are you so upset about it? So sometimes in compromising or being asked to compromise, let us look at our attitude. Is it mm -hmm. something that we can deal without having to get upset about and eventually it works out? But if it's not something you can deal at all, then have better conversations and communication. Yeah, also, the, right the fact that your spouse is compromising a certain thing for you doesn't make it that doesn't give you the leverage to just continue doing it. So me. <laughs> no, I always take, take my one overdue. Also, <laughs> doesn't like yams. Okay. And if you want to honor me, do yam my egg. There's a way I do my egg. Put a lot of tomatoes. Put eggs. Mm. A lot of onions. I think so the onions offended you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there are generation of onions inside. Yeah. And you have done me well. So I came home one evening. I was really tired. I put mm. in effort to do the, the sauce. He likes the sauce, but don't, let it not be with yam. It can be with anything else. And I served it. And I was like, ah, why did you do yam? I just rolled my eyes like, ah, it's not be food. This is after all these years we've been talking about it every time. Can mm. we do small yam? But it will put it out of love because I have already cooked. Mm -hmm. And so the usual attitude, I just got arrogant and rolled my eyes like, <laughs> I saw it, I was like, okay, I'm not going to eat. I was like, ah. I, I then tried to manage it after I'd already started this. I was like, eh, ah, it's not, eh, oh, yeah, oh yeah, next time. Mm. And he said, no, there will be no next time. Mm. I will not eat this one. Come and carry it off. <laughs> 
If let me cook us down, it will be fun. Jesus. Ah, that's my major attitude. Let's take this call, Tayo from Ikorodu. Good morning, Tayo. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm a first time caller. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so happy speaking with ladies. Ah, you're welcome. I'm enjoying the show this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, now we're going to go to the topic of brown. My husband smokes, and I'm this kind of person. I don't love the smell, even when I'm outside. The smoke. When people are smoking around me, I have to go inside. Oh, wow. So my husband smokes. <laughs> Till now, I don't like kissing him because of the smell. But I have to do compromise on other things, mm -hmm. do other things, exactly. so that the marriage will keep on working. Though he complains, he loves kissing. But I already told him I don't like the smell. Mm. Until now, we are good. This is eight years. So, so how do you handle still... it? You don't kiss as much? Or you don't kiss at all? Mm, once in a while, once in a while. Mm -hmm. Maybe when he doesn't smoke, okay. then wow. I will kiss him. But when he smokes, I don't. I don't. Oh, okay. Oh, does it, does it happen? Let me say something. Sometimes I imagine, can you like... Put a tom tom in his mouth or one of those minty stuff, and then kiss him. Kiss so that the flavor. Is, yeah, yeah. I'm just asking. If it's it deep. Can be romantic. Exactly. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. So I, I like where we are going, which is um, I like the point that Miriam raised that sometimes it seems like we are sharing the very easy stuff. Yeah. But at the time we were going through it, it was not easy. You know, we can oh. gist about it now, and it seems like is it not beans you oh, gave no, up? Is it not garlic you gave up? Mm. Is it not this one you gave up? But at the time we're having those conversations, they were not funny. You don't tell somebody who best food is beans that we I don't eat beans so and one of the things that even made me or made him like me in a way was the fact that I could cook I was good in the kitchen and I used to be proud of my cooking abilities right and then you now pick one food and say ah no I don't eat this one it was a dent to my uh, uh, an attack to my I took it personal yes yeah, so it was an attack to my personality skill. and my culinary skills at the time and yeah. I felt really ah uh, you love me now you should accept all of me right so it was something that we now had to over and over and over became before it became like okay the norm I don't even remember anymore. I have to make sure I put in the time to at least once in a week. Let's have beans. And I, before he eats the beans, I would have called him during the day, baby, prepare and beans with a chopper <laughs> to prepare his mind. But I grill fish for you, or snail day, mm. or gizzard day, we will go take chopper. You know, I prepare his mind every week for him to eat that beans, right? So um, how do we not trivialize people's compromise. Now, this is not just for outsiders, but even for the partners. Because sometimes you tell your partner that you don't like this, but the partner is feeling like, this shouldn't be a big deal now. Why are you complaining about this, madam? Mm -hmm. How do we get to that point where we understand everybody's uh, compromise or their contribution as valid, no matter how little it yes, seems to exactly. us? I try and make as much effort as your partner is making. Mm -hmm. and don't ever, because I wear a job, and so you, can, you can't bring in a friend guests to sleep over without proper conversations even a family member that's a deal that's no a so that's a so if someone can be at the door and it's a lady i'll be like eh, my husband is just okay without running through him that my friend is visiting oh so he used to think ah, well you make strong emphasis when somebody and as in, if your friend is coming you want to host them in the in the parlor not in my room i would you need to tell me yeah. that someone is there you need you, you can't once that person, I don't know, you have to go out and meet that person. That's a roof. Yeah. I'll be shouting and raising the roof. But when it comes to my own turn, hey, that's my friend. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, you, are you not just a man? <laughs> Trivialize you know? So we had that conversation. I just thought it was for me. the rule was made only for me. I cannot be made for somebody else. You know? And so when we had, it was like, you know, the body you cover is all that I cover as well. Mm. And I deserve that right as well. And such talks just taught me. Whatever you, what, exactly what you want and how you want it. It's the same way the other person. You know, pay it back. Same thing, yeah. Pay it back. So if, for instance, your own is garlic that you cannot stand and he loves it, pay it back in a way that, you know, whatever he's paying you back for. So mm. when you both give up some things in life, both of you are forming a new family values, new rules, new things that you can stand. For instance, Miriam said, that now Pepe, it has become their mm. new yeah, goals. Yeah. So they don't even know how Pepe sells in the market. <laughs> mm. Amazon, for instance, likes only stew and i love my okras my we do as i swim in them so 
I've learned I bought these two set plates. There are two soups, but we're eating the same because we eat together. <laughs> there are two soups, okay. there, but they're eating. Those plates with partitions. Yes. Mm. So you see my own swimming in the way. If I had a drinker, mm. and then you see it's on just small. Well, but we're still eating together. I just mm. find a way, you know, as, because it's a home. A home, I see it, I say, is always a, like a business. You're investing, you're investing. Mm. Everybody's bringing in what they can, you know, and trying mm. to make it work. Now that you talk about eating from the same plate, I don't like to do that. And I wonder if I had married someone who liked to eat from the same place, how I would have handled mm -hmm. it. Uh, you would have stand, coped, too. I can't stand it. Uh, it also reminds me, my husband, well, he used to snore. He doesn't snore as much. And or is it that you've gotten used to it now? You don't um, know the intensity of the snoring? No, he actually doesn't even snore as much mm -hmm. because it was sort of related to health oh, okay. thing. Okay, okay. And I am such a light sleeper. Like, mm. I can't, mm -hmm. any tiny noise, and I'm up. Oh, there used to be times I'd be like, oh, I would get up, I would get up in bed at night, don't be staring at in him. anger, you know. <laughs> but um, you're right about eventually getting used to the sound. But mm -hmm. of course, he's worked, you know, done some work and he does not um, snore as much. But I remember, you know, one time he was snoring and I thought, ah, this sounds like music in my ears. So I was wow. telling him, yeah, <laughs> so I was telling him, I said, ah, this is your snore. I said, honestly, it sounds like music. <laughs> So he was like, what happened? I said, mm, it's because you've been behaving yourself. It's no. so good. So oh. now all your bad habits just seem oh, like exactly. flowers. So, yeah. <laughs> See, like, oh, yeah. I'm going to snore so, now. Yeah. Oh. oh. That stops snoring. Mm. I just, this day, because when I sleep, I snore, I hear myself. How? I don't, I don't know even how. know when I snore. I hear myself. Yeah, I don't I, snore. Sometimes I wake up, I'm like, did I snore? I'm like, yeah, ah, totally loud. <laughs> you almost really shake the house. <laughs> and the whole snoring now. snores sometimes. But when you just snore. wake him up and tell him oh, you are snoring, once he changes his position, it stops. It's okay. yeah. I wasn't it snoring until I got pregnant for my third baby. And then one day he said, ha, ah, baby, I didn't sleep. I said, what happened? Say you were snoring. I said, me? Me? <laughs> me? Not argue. Yes. Yeah. As I was arguing. He said, it just started. And I understood it was a pregnancy. I started. I said, ah, I was shocked. In my house, you know? I'm not, no one's allowed to tell me I snore. I do not snore. I never <laughs> snore. Snoring does not happen with me. <laughs> yeah. So I think we have to coast down on this uh, topic. Um, some of the things we've learned is your attitude as well. When you're, you know, Hearing the feedback yeah. and trying to compromise. How do you tell the next person? How do you handle some of the feedbacks that they get? And secondly, uh, no compromise is trivial. No matter how little it sounds, we must pay attention to the emotional needs of our, par uh, our partners. So sometimes, you know, I complain about some things like, ah, madam, this is too small for you to be. Mm -mm. You don't, it's not small to me. For me to, to get this uh, feeling of anger or resentment or whatever it is that comes at the time, it should tell you that this has hit somewhere in my emotional space mm -hmm. and it's not small for me so we must listen to our partner and work hand in hand so if we are in a team we are all working to score the goal we cannot be playing against ourselves we are playing for the same team and that's how marriage is and hopefully by the grace of God we'll be able to compromise better in our marriages let's take mm -hmm. a short break now when we come back we move on to yet another topic stay with us Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we have another story. A Nigerian rapper, Eriga, took to his Twitter uh, and said that, uh, I used to think our parents were so strict, but watching these kids today, I think our parents saved our lives. What are your thoughts on this? It generated a lot of, you know, for and against, mostly for. And um, some persons were saying, I thank God do all the strictness I got, all the beating I got, the way my parents were so strict with me. Uh, that's why I'm behaving well today. That's why I'm disciplined. And he was comparing it with how the children of today behaved. And they, you know, were looking back and a lot of people were saying that children of today are so spoiled. They are so, everything is my, their emotional well-being. Everything is their, they don't want uh, depression. They are depressed. They can't stand any form of perseverance, any form of endurance at all. And we're able to stand that because of the training and the discipline that we got from our parents. So what are your thoughts on this? I would like to know what you think about the children we are 
raising today our Gen Z's Gen and Z's. how we turned out and let's see if some of this training we got was what helped us if we actually believed that we were helped. It's not as <laughs> you see some of these uh, kids being, you, you, you know, you think you would almost agree. In fact, you would agree that, you know, there's no upbringing anymore. So uh, for me, Sha, beating was not the only thing. It were tough talks. Yeah. Mm. You know, those tough talks, you don't, they don't do them anymore. Mm. They don't. They don't do them. If you do tough talk with one child now, <laughs> this was. I'm depressed. Hey, mommy, you hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just look and see. Okay, you're not insulting me, boy. I <laughs> no, uh, no, you know some some things. I, I told you one now. My father used to say, "Nah, I get mm -hmm. Just when uh, when interpreted one, they said, "Don't be a fool. The size of your of your body, the size of your age. Mm. You will use it like that. So, like uh, <laughs> telling you to come." To comport yourself. Hmm. And the way he will tell you, you will not forget to comport yourself. Okay. You would remember. Mm -hmm. But they have told you, they only need to tell you once in a lifetime to know how to behave that behavior whenever you see it. But these kids, you know, the way they are now, I'm dealing with a 20 something year old recently and wondering how she was raised. How you talk anyhow? You talk how, you know? You don't know. Just do things anyhow. Let's go. Okay. My mom used to say, to correct me when I want to go out on adventures with my friends. Every hour, I didn't make your two left leg not carry you. It's how waiting, you know, go for use your right leg, come out. Mm. You know, she would just say, I'll be like, eh, it's true. If I get into trouble, how do I explain? How do you, mm. you know, I'm thinking well, it, I'm probably you know. Get into trouble. Yeah. No. Did it stop you? See, it stopped me. Ah, uh, oh, it stopped a lot okay. of things. So I'll be like, mm. if you talk so. If you stop a lot of things. things. <coughs> it stopped a lot of things. Because on other shows, you have told us <coughs> how you were so exactly. troublesome. I'm telling you. Uh, no, I was. Yeah. I was bad with trouble. Okay. I was a child that needed attention to be raised. <laughs> I cannot lie sitting down here. Mm. Some beating that I thought, ah, this beating was appropriate, was at timely. Some talks was timely. And I would really like to be timely with my kids. Mm. I don't want to just be anyhow. Mm. In the name of a, or in a modern world with a, with a child, you know, you are the one who born your child. You know that child more than anybody in the world. If your goal is to raise a proper individual, you know to pay attention. You know certain things that you, that you just would, would not be able to overlook. Well, there was one that happened. My child was about less than two at the time. I we went visiting a, a friend, a family friend, and he saw a toy there. You know the way babies are, oh, I want a toy, toy, toy. And the person was like, give him. She didn't say to me. And the toy was for somebody else's child who had stayed at her house. Oh, wow. And mm. she gave the toy. Sadly, we ended up in the enemy's camp with this toy. Because the owner of the toy saw the toy and thought it was a good reason to disgrace and embarrass me outside. Oh, wow. I'm telling you. So sometimes this standing of... I'm just talking of toddlers now. Mm -hmm. Imagine it being an adult child. The word that were used, the words used, was that I allowed my child to take what does not belong to him. Ew. Outside. You know? I was like, we were visiting That's a family for you. safe place. And I would not have, and I remember saying to that woman that day that, no, no, he can't take it, he's not his own. Let's go, let's go, let's go. She said, he's crying, he's crying. And so you, imagine it for a, a grown-up child, he will cry. He, he died crying. You know, those old, they, they cry blood, mm -hmm. as they used to say in Edo. Mm -hmm. If you not cry blood, make it cry, mm -hmm. you know? Those, there are times for those things. There are times <laughs> to stand your ground, to protect yourself from... Mm -hmm. These things, when you leave too many things unattended, yeah. you might just find yourself in a very embarrassing place. Yeah. yeah so but I think, mm -hmm. well, I think we're getting it wrong somehow. Let me say, let me just say 50% we're getting mm -hmm. it wrong. Because Why? presently now, the way we raise our kids, the community not helping okay. us in raising these kids. Mm -hmm. Now children now, it's just the mom and the dad, that's if the dad is even involved, mm. we're the ones raising these kids by ourselves. You see a child will do something wrong outside. For example, my daughter, there was a time my daughter went out and, you know, she was strolling in an estate, she was strolling, and then she didn't greet some, of, mm -hmm. some elders, you know, she did not greet. I was like, so, the elder now came and told me, after a week, he came tell me that, ah, I saw your daughter, oh, she, she didn't greet you, blah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why didn't you tell her there and then? Mm -hmm. What do you want me to go and do about it now? I went, I went to meet my daughter and I was like, ah, so, so, so day, she could not even remember. Remember anymore. She could not remember. There and then. Could have been handled, kid. yeah. But another thing here is, sometimes you reprimand the child, yeah, the child mother will come, come and meet you. Why did you talk to my mm -hmm. child? Mm -hmm. Why did you do this why to my talk. child? Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. So now the community needs to help. But these days, the community, are, they are not part of raising a child anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. Miriam.
Do you agree with these two women? Because I'm waiting for them somewhere. <laughs> no, but, you know, I think we learn from the older generation. I think parenting has always evolved. And with our generation, we are raising our children differently. And it's based off the fact that there's some things that were done right and some that were done Don't wrong. wrong yeah. um, so I was a very sensitive child growing up. There's some tough words mm -hmm. and maybe no, that were used for me. For my sister, it didn't mean anything. For mm -hmm. someone like you, it didn't mean anything. But for me, it stayed with me for so long. Mm. You know, I talk about how my confidence was, you know, by parenting. I love my mother to death, as you all know. But I just felt that the parenting for me could have been a bit different, different. because mm. of it was. And yet, and yet, now as I'm raising my children, I'm realizing maybe she was right all along. Mm. Do you understand? Maybe if she catered too much to my sensitivity, I would have been resilient. Mm -hmm. You know, wife in it. Yes, so the have thing you is, you know? I'm... <laughs> um, yeah, I was I'm, It's constantly a balancing act. See, it's a balancing act for yeah. me. Yeah. Because yeah, sometimes way. my children, <laughs> Based on what I'm doing, I'll see them, you know, blossom and I'm proud. I'm like, oh, okay, it's working. There are some things that when they do, I'm like, it's good for me. Say you say you don't do this, you don't do this kind of parenting. Now see what has happened. How would you handle it? So I'm constant, you know me, I'm constantly looking to all of you. Is <laughs> what am I doing wrong? What am I doing right? Mm. So from it is really about balancing act. But there are sensitive children. Mm. And because I was that sort of child, I tend to be more careful about the emotional state of my children. Mm. And I, you know, I, when I was growing up, there are some people that I see them so bold, almost arrogant. You know, I was listening to Trudy saying something, that he, he, um, a clip, and he said that, you know, if you were to choose two extremes for his children, one of the two extremes for his children, either, you know, really shy and lacking confidence, mm. or bold. so bold to the point of arrogance. You pick so bold to the point of mm. arrogance. And I get it. Because, you're because for me, I felt that in, in trying to raise me to be proper, I, I, I couldn't speak up in some situations that would have been life-changing. Mm. Some adults got away with some Same. really terrible behavior because mm. of that um, upbringing. I have a daughter. God help you. Mm. If you like, let it fly. Back if you do it now. She will tell. <laughs> so if she, she knows she cannot tell, mommy, please, I do not want to be rude. Mm. But I would like to say it makes me proud. Because mm. for me, I knew that there were things I could not say because I was growing up and I had to, you know, walk that path. And people got away with bad behavior. So, yeah. so you know, um, I like, I've heard from both sides and I want to believe there's always um, advantage and disadvantage yeah. of any method you use for your children, right? Mm -hmm. But what pains me or what hurts me is the fact that we assume, we in this generation, assume that we behave better than these young ones. We don't. Hmm. We don't behave better than them. The only difference at the time was we were not expressive. We were not given that opportunity to express. But we had some of these things in our minds. A lot of us grew up with split personalities. You know the personality <laughs> to present to your father when you're home? Mm -hmm. You know the one that you do in school? Nobody follows you there. We had a lot of badly behaved students in secondary school and university. All the people that entered cult, is it from this Gen Z generation? It's from, it was from our time. Boys were being killed in the university. Boys were carrying guns in the university. Boys were stealing in the university. Mm. These girls were doing different things in the university. And it's still this generation. So I don't think our parents um, did bad or they did good. Mm. What I believe is that they worked with what they had at the time. They did the best they could with what they knew at the time, with the resources available to them at the time. And now we now have an opportunity to want to change it because we saw some of the adverse effects of how we grew up, if you're truthful to yourself. So I'm a very truthful person to myself. And I knew that with all the beating that they beat me, it didn't stop me from doing what I wanted to do. As a matter of fact, I would do it so well, lie about it, cover it, you will not know. I had to learn to split my personality so I give you what you want to see and I go and do what I want to do, right? And I was still raised with that shielding and beating and chastising and insulting and all of that. There were some traumas that I got from growing up that I am still reliving in my adulthood. Mm. It's taking me understanding to now you know, separate it and say, okay, but this is me. I am a creator of my own life. I can make changes in this way. A lot of people are not where I am today in terms of awareness to even come out of some of the things they heard their parents say to them. It damaged them. It didn't let them flourish the way they would have. A lot of people lost most of their talents because of some of the very deep words that were said to them. We're not looking at that. We're looking at we, we can greet. We can greet. Mm. We can do this one. We can do that one. 
if in this generation you raise your children to greet, they will greet. If you raise your children not to tell lies, they will not tell lies. If you model the right behaviors to them because you know better, they will take it, whether you flog them or not. It's not really about the flogging. So I used to beat my children. No, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm not beating my children. They are growing now, so <laughs> I hardly, <laughs> yes. So we now have conversations. But when they were little, I felt I could control with the hand. I used to. I will, before you realize it, they know. My son will tell you, ah, mommy does not. It's daddy that used to give us long rope. Mm -hmm. Daddy will call us and be doing uh, salmon on the mount. But mommy, better keep your face well when she's asking you those questions. Because before you know, you collect woto woto. So I still did that. But then I started realizing some of the effects it had on me. And I didn't want to have hardened children. So I had to soft pedal. So the thing is about balance. We ourselves that were condemning the Gen Zs, we modeled their behavior to them. We modeled it in a way that we couldn't speak up. But we showed in the attitude, and they became expressive, and they spoke what we had in we mind. We allowed them to speak up. We allowed them to speak so up. We allowed them what them. they had, what we had in mind that we couldn't say at the time. So it's the same thing as far as I'm so concerned. There are still certain things that you know. Um, they say peculiar that they take English talk to another guesses. <laughs> you know, because you, you, we, there's, you, <laughs> we, this modernity. Mm -hmm. You know, the Oyibo-ish Yes, we're trying to copy the Western. Doing so much, too much of. Yeah. As is why we have this, this a bit, um, little gap that we're seeing, that we're talking about every day. So I see it when I, do, because I speak too much English with my kids. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't have to, I struggled to learn. At weeks, I'm still learning the proverb that my father just spoke. I'm just trying to be, see, somebody yes. tell you, so, 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 so. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? Know. So there was a time I was telling my father that all my friends in school, they have before that time when it was raining, this um, blue, blackberry. Okay. It was raining, pinging, pinging. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to get a pinging tin. I need to, my father say, oh my, go have it on oh my Blackberry. Go and sit down. And I was like, oh my, go have it on my go fit on. this one talk now? Oh God. So weeks, I will be going from one auntie, one uncle that can speak the Esanko language to see. Mm. And one day he just came back from a family meeting. and said, ah, I'm a professor from my tribe. In uh, Unilori had written a book, the Waziri of Auchi. He said, I bought the book for you. It was a dictionary of proverbs in my language. Mm. Months on end, I'm on it. So the time I put into reading the proverb, I don't get sense finished. Honest. By the time I'm doing it, I'm like, oh. Before you knew it, I got this resistance to everything everybody's using. I say, have it till today. If I don't, I don't, I don't need not it. For it doesn't me. Doesn't impress it's not for me. Yeah. I learned it. Little, little, but my kids, I, a good friend, you know, you cannot do that. I'm speaking English. The child will come back tomorrow and say, Mommy, I still want it. No, you know, if I so don't throw him, shots, the not beating. <laughs> it wasn't beating, the tough talk. Mm, yes. yeah. we, my father is a talker. He told stories to correct you. Talk. He will talk, but my mama, <clears throat> I hope she's watching, because she's watching anyway. She watches everything. <laughs> you know, she's a bitter, bitter, bitter. I have Max. <laughs> <laughs> from the beating because she couldn't handle me. Mm. I was small. You want to catch me? I don't pass here. I was. <laughs> I, can, I believe I that. I showed the woman Pepe. <laughs> there was a day she was trying to catch me, and I held on to a branch of the tree. I she could just couldn't see me. I went up like a monkey, and the next thing she saw me jump and landed. So she said, you just speaking. So my mom had to wait for me to sleep to start a conversation with beating. Yes. Yeah, so she wake I me up ahead. Yes, oh yeah, and all yeah, like like doors like locked. From the so dream, you will you wake up. up. In fact, my mom does not do it I when you do something. Yes. When you are no, sleeping, they'll post it you, for you. You'll be running when they want to be sleeping. Thank you. You'll be running up and down. My mom will say, no, don't yes. worry. Let me wait for her. When no you are sleeping, <laughs> that thing you did. I'm telling you. Let me what, just see people have a One of my uncles. When um, my son was two plus, you know that they are terrible to behavior when mm -hmm. they are throwing things up and down. So I was chasing him. No, I think it was four. <laughs> it was four. Don't I was tell chasing him. Eh? And I was pregnant too. Oh my goodness. I fell. Unfortunately for him, I grabbed his, his leg. leg. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's been pregnant for more. <laughs> no, he's pregnant. He's beat him. <laughs> My husband shouted, ah, cannibal. <laughs> then he wants to chop him. He just beat him. I say, yes. <gasps> <laughs> he still gives the story to Twitter. Ah, if mommy cannot get you, mommy will bite you. <laughs> I hope you were there. You didn't bite hard. Do not, no, my son. No, no, no. Uh, my son. Don't bite like you are telling me. 
are looking but, at this. Ah, till like, today he tells that story. <laughs> but you know, because, because you was frustrated. Because you persisted. Yes. Mm. But no kids, story now. if you didn't persist, they take you. So me, I always yes, say, well, I keep yeah. my I keep my yes. symbol of authority near me. But once I pick it over an issue, you, you will chop it. it. Yeah. Mm. The reason is that if I drop it back. You will take me for granted. Yeah. Yeah. So once I hold that thing over any child, they know better. Uh, no, no, no. So they always tell my like, the older person in this house is not. In my house, yeah. you do. Like, it when we were growing, it was a uniform, you know, everybody, all mm -hmm. our mothers, mm -hmm. it was a uniform kind of mm -hmm. upbringing. Yeah. You know that when you do this, you are going to be, you know, they will flog you. This one, this they talk to you. Yeah, this one, this one, but you. this our generation, everybody's just doing, we're just doing different things. Mm -hmm. yeah, we have Some people will be talking. Some are talking, some are not talking. Some will be like, ah, no, just allow the person. Let mm -hmm. her express herself mm -hmm. totally or but let her be herself totally, you know, and all. The way that when you, okay, so sometimes I bother. You train your child in a certain way and then when they go to school, they meet other people. Other people, mm -hmm. yeah. Other people's kids. Yes, they now start forming some kind of habits. Mm -hmm. When they come home and you see the habits, when I see, when, when they come, when I see the habits, I'll be like, no, 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 mm -hmm. okay. They'll come, they'll say, this person's mother did this person. I said, I'm not that person's mother. Mm -hmm. I am Nadia's mother. Mm -hmm. So I must behave like Nadia's mm -hmm. mother. Yeah. Leave me like that. Mm -hmm. You understand? So all those things, are just the upbringing is just different. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, a confusion with all this psychological talk, really. Exactly. So you want to talk tough to your child. They say you do not think of their, yeah, their mental health. Their breakdown. I'm not even patient No, no, no but, 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 but to be honest, you know, I have some young girls that work with me. And this is a conversation they say that, you know, I, they say that their parents don't put into consideration. Yeah, mental health. They said, you know, we're talking about drug addiction, actually. And, you know, one of them was saying that, you know, even though there is drug addiction, a lot of people forget that there's alcohol abuse. Yeah at this age and yeah. she says for her she feels that it has a lot to do with parenting mm -hmm. our parents do not pay attention parents do not pay attention to their mental health so these are uh, people in their very early 20s mm -hmm. she says that this is a conversation they have with each other all the time where they are talking to each other about their mental health and what their parents put them through or what they say to them and when i had the conversation i'm like okay it's it's you know it's valid but have we raised you to such a point that you are not tough, mm -hmm. that everything, you cannot, yes, that everything you affects you, mm -hmm. you know, so how then will you build resilience? And that's one of the things I yeah, hear about we're, we're wrapping generations. Up. Yeah, but I, I think um, one of the ways we were able to build resilience, apart from the beating basketballs that they gave to us, was the fact that we were busy. When you well, come back from engaged. school, yeah. you are well, washing busy. plates. No, uh, they are always on their phone. They are, yeah, you, exactly. yes. We are washing plates. Yes. You are sweeping, yes. you are going to grind pepper. Yes. Then when you finish, you're not going to run tire. Mm -hmm. You are playing. Yes. Uh, so you are it depends so on your social, economic, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. There's, mm -hmm. Wait mm -hmm. now. Okay. Even at that time, um, parents, children had more physical activity to do. I mm -hmm. get it. And with physical activity, and okay, even yes, the no, rich I, I do hands is for sports. them workshop now. Even sports, they okay. will play tennis. And we don't That's when they go and learn the keyboard. Before, I'm talking about the rich class at the mm -hmm. time. They go and learn swimming. Mm -hmm. They go and learn this. They go and learn that. Physical There's activity. No time for There's workshop. no time for you to sit down and you are now seeing what other people are doing and all of that. So that it was easy for you to. Sports gives you resilience mm -hmm. without knowing that you're building resilience. No, I'm just saying the reason why mm. I'm a, a bit disagreeing yeah. with you is that is these very young people, they are getting all this, they are using the internet to get all sorts of jobs. Mm. They are so young, still in university, doing all sorts of jobs. Yes. For us, we have to wait till we finish. Yes, they seem to be more... We're talking of children. Media now. So when you're forming, you're forming a child, yeah. this is trying to talk about forming the child. Yeah. Yeah. So I, say, I have to. My eldest, eldest child is... She knows what to do. She mm. comes in, she does it. But the brother is always on the tab. Mm. He will be, he can be there and you will not hear a yeah. sound. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if it grows like that. But we had TV. So that one has to do it. TV by 4 p.m. We had TV by 4 p.m. Let us go, ladies. Let us go. Let us go. We just need to find ways and ask our God to help us. Our scorecard and report card will be shown when the kids are big and we hope that we are not making any mistakes. And I think that's all we can take on the show today. Yes, tomorrow is Saturday. Your view pigeon continues. So don't miss it and we'll see you again on Monday. Bye-bye now.